Hey there, Nick Tax here. In this video, we're gonna go over three different ways to remove something from your Git history. And depending on your use case, all three options are going to be viable. So option one is gonna be removing the latest N number of commits. You know, for example, maybe you just want to remove the last commit or last couple of commits. Option number two is going to be deleting a very specific commit. So let's say that you have five commits and you want to delete the one in the middle, the third commit, and just that one, that's going to work. And the last option is going to be reverting a commit, which unlike the other two is not going to rewrite history. This could be super useful if you have a long lived Git repo, maybe you push something up, a couple days later you discovered it's a bug, and now you just want to reverse that specific commit it'll actually make a new commit for us, so it's not rewriting history. Now, with that said, yeah, the first two commands are going to be rewriting history, so it will be expected that you run these commands before you push something up to a remote repo, but again, you can always use dash dash force. However, that's really frowned upon if other people are working on the repo, that will mess up everybody's history, so you probably don't wanna do that. So yeah, with that said, um, like all the videos, I will have a blog post associated with this one. All the commands and details are there if you wanna follow along. Um, but yeah, in this case here, just making a new temp directory, initializing a new Git repo, touching a couple empty files, and then giving us some commits that we can play around with so we can demonstrate all the different three options here. So if we do a git log, yeah, we just have commit A, B, C, super simple. Um, but yeah, let's go with uh, the most basic case here of let's just say that we want to reset this top commit, the latest commit that we have here. So yeah, we can do a git reset head tilde one. And maybe you've uh, Googled for this one quite a few times. I know I have. But if you do this, do a git log, you can see commit C, that latest commit is no longer there. However, if we do an LSLA here, here, you can see that the C file is still on disk. And if we do a get status, it will be untracked. Basically, it didn't modify the actual file in the working directory. It just removed that commit. And oftentimes that is something nice because yeah, maybe you just want to, I don't know, redo your commit afterwards, something like that. Um, but yeah, in any case, there are other things that we can do here. Let me just go back to the original example. Let's say we do the same thing, but we add dash dash hard. So that is going to do the same thing. Be very careful about running this one though in your repo because it's really going to do other things as well. For example, if we do um, a get status here, you can see that the C file is no longer there. And then also here you can see the C file has been deleted. So basically all the files associated with that commit are going to be removed from your working directory. Again, super careful, you know, running that on a real one. Um, but also let's go back to the original example here and uh, just demonstrate what happens if you do something like a get reset hill, uh, head tilde two. So in this case here, it's not just gonna target that middle commit B. You can see that commit C is also gone. You can think of it as kind of like a cascading upwards effect there where it is gonna, you know, modify the commit that you targeted as well as a newer commits as well. But again, we didn't use hard, so this file still exists on disk. Also, let's go back to the original uh, example before. Whoops, let me just copy this, paste it, sure. And uh, yeah, we, we've been using the shortcut like head tilde two, etc. But let's say that we want to target this one here, but not do head tilde two. So instead we could do get reset and then put in the SHA, but it's really important that we put the carrot at the end here. If we didn't put the carrot here, then it is gonna get the parent commit instead. You know, we don't wanna do uh, a modification of commit C, we wanna do modification to commit B. So again, yeah, put the carrot at the end. This is gonna do the same thing as uh, head tilde two there. You can see in this case here, B got targeted, and then also this one got modified as well. So just an aside there, and now let's go back to the original uh, set up here for one more example before we move on to option two. So if we do a get log here, you know, it could be interesting to be like, well, what if you just wanna reset the initial commit in this case, like the actual very first commit of the repo, you may think like, well, we can just do like reset head tilde three, and then uh, we're good to go, but we're not. And also, you know, if you put in something like a SHA with a carrot at the end, it's gonna give a similar type of error where it just won't work. So we have a couple of different options, right? If this is like a brand new Git repo, sure, it might make sense just to like RMF the, the whole entire Git repo, start from scratch, but you know, maybe you have some configuration in there that you don't wanna redo, or maybe you have some other branches. There are things that you can do. For example, you can do a Git update ref, and then we'll delete head here. And that is basically going to bring things back to the state where there are no commits here. And uh, yeah, it's just moving some pointer to, I guess, like the view of the world before all those commits. I don't know how, you know, how Git is actually doing it under the hood. But yeah, it's totally worth pointing out that is an option. But all the files still exist on disk, which could be interesting, maybe not, depending on what you want. Uh, but you can do a reset dash dash hard. Keep in mind, you know, running this is very dangerous. This will delete all the different things on disk. And then if we do here, you can see that those files have been nuked. So yeah, that's a couple of different options for option number one, you know, resetting and a number of commits, however you'd like. So let's bring things back to the original state here and play around with option number two, which is going to be targeting a very specific uh, commit to delete. So like, let's say that we wanna delete commit B, but we don't wanna mess with A, we don't wanna mess with C, what could we do? Well, we can do an interactive rebase here. So let's do a get rebase uh, interactive. 
And then like, by the way, before, you know, we can do a head till day two, or we can put in the shot with a carrot at the end. It's up to us. Let's just do till day two. In this case, it's pretty easy. And of course, you know, your shots are going to be different because these are randomly generated. But yeah, let's do this. And I've done videos about this in the past when it came to editing commits in the past. But in this case, we're going to be dropping them instead of editing. So in this case, we'll just do drop. And that is going to automatically rebase everything. And if we do a get log here, you can see that commit A is there, C is there, B is not. This is very different than doing a reset. We just got rid of B. And if we do uh, an LSLA here, you can see file B is gone. That was associated with that commit. Super handy. You know, I've done this one quite a few times in the past where, I don't know, I've got some automated scripts to update my example Dockerized apps for, you know, Flask, Django, uh, Rails, Node and Phoenix, et cetera. And like it programmatically does a whole bunch of updates and makes those get, get, get commit messages for me. But every once in a while, I discover like a new tagging format on the Docker Hub for one of them. And like, I just need to basically go back, delete a commit, and then just redo it later. So yeah, I, I use this one every once in a while. Pretty handy. Okay, so let's move on here, bring things back to their normal state. We'll go over a couple of different examples here. So if we go back to the git log, you know, let's just say though that you wanted to delete this initial commit here. So you can't do the interactive rebase on head till day three, just like we couldn't reset. So let's see what we could do instead. So instead we can just do a get rebase interactive and we can target a very specific uh, action here by doing dash dash root. And this will let us target this one to drop and then we can drop that and then we are good to go. We do our get log. A is not there, B is there, C is there. So yeah, the dash dash root is uh, pretty handy if you just need to target that first or initial commit here. But you know, let's go back to the initial state here and just cover maybe, I don't know, the unhappy case of what if something goes wrong during the rebase itself because there are some scenarios that could trigger that. So let's go to uh, this temp directory here, I guess. Okay. So let's go back and do a get log. Let's just say that we want to do head till day two. We want to do our interactive rebase here on head till day two. Now, if you happen to have another Git process running during a rebase, like for example, maybe you have, um, I don't know, a code editor open with a Git commit message that you didn't uh, exit out of, or maybe, I don't know, your code editor is doing something, this rebase may fail. So let's see if we can trigger this in some way. So if I touch uh, the next letter in the alphabet here, I guess we can probably, maybe that could be enough. I don't know, let's see. Uh, let's try to do a drop here and see what happens. Nope, that wasn't enough. All right, well, let's uh, experiment one more time. Sure, let's remove that file there. And then, yeah, we'll do the rebase again, just like before. Yep, and get ready to drop it, we won't drop. And then, yeah, touch D, and then I guess we need to add that. And then now if we try to drop this one, I bet you this is gonna cause some error. Yeah, so you can see, things didn't work. Now, a couple of different takeaways here. The world isn't busted. We just need to abort this rebase and we're good to go. But like you can see here, my terminal actually shows what branch I'm on, but now we're actually not in a branch, right? Um, you know, we, we do a get branch here. We can see we're in the middle of a rebase here, but we don't really get any help from Git's output here as far as I see, letting us know that, uh, hey, by the way, you need to abort this. So we could just do a get rebase dash dash abort, just like any other rebase. And that brings us back to the state of the good, good world here. So, you know, if that ever comes up, don't freak out. It's not necessarily something that's irreversible. Yeah, you just need to abort the rebase. And now we're back in business here, just like the rebase never started. So now you can do whatever you need to do, you know, maybe close out that commit window or whatever your code editor or whatever, you know, might be happening that's causing the rebase to fail. I just wanted to bring that to attention here in case it happens. Cause I remember the very first time that type of thing happened to me, I'm like, oh my God, there's a bug in Git, I broke something, my history is screwed. No, no, very simple. Just abort the, the rebase and you're good to go. Uh, but yeah, okay. So now let's go over the third example. Let me also just bring things back to the original state of the world here. And this is going to be reverting a commit. So let's say that we wanna just, I don't know, yeah, the one in the middle, let's take. We can do git revert is the name of the subcommand here. Head till day two. And this will actually go ahead and reverse whatever, you know, that commit did. If it made files, it's going to delete files. If it made a patch to some file, it's going to remove that patch from that file. Um, I kind of like the defaults here, you know, using revert here. And then it also has the original get shot in the message itself. Make searching for that later. Uh, quite nice. But yeah, um, we can do this and then we can do get log. But notice this time around, you know, these original commits, they were not modified. Instead, we just have that revert commit there, a new commit. So now we can push things up. I'm not going to push it to anything because there's no remote repo. But yeah, if we do a show on that commit, you can see it's actually just doing a removal. Whereas if we did a head till they or get show head till day four, you know, you can see, oh, sorry, three. 
yeah, we can see that uh, that actually just added a file. So this is, you know, remove the file basically. So that's pretty handy. It is worth noting though, too, that if we do a get log here, you know, let's say that we want to, I don't know, let's go and modify this one here. Uh, we can also put in get revert and put in the SHA. But this time around, we don't need to put the carrot at the end. We can just put in the exact shot of the one that we want. So in this case here, we're going to expect it to be like commit B. And there it is. So we do that. And then, uh, yeah, we do a get log. And there it is for B. So again, if you're doing revert, you don't need to put the carrot. If you're doing reset, you do. If you're doing an interactive rebase, you also do. But yeah, revert, you do not. Uh, one other thing that could be interesting, I suppose, if you want to play around with this a little bit more is... Yeah, maybe I've done like once in a thousand years, but okay. So hear me out. If you do a get log here, you know, let's say that you want to revert commit C. Okay, so we've learned plenty of times now or a couple times now. We can do revert like this, right? And there is another flag though that you could run is dash dash no commit. And that is going to get things set up here where it is not going to be auto commit for you. But yeah, you can go ahead and um, do whatever you need to do. So this could be useful if let's say that Instead of maybe reverting the entire commit, maybe you want to revert like 90% of the commit, but you just want to fiddle with things before you actually make the revert commit itself. So yeah, in this case here, now you can do whatever modifications that you need to do. Of course, it doesn't make sense here. We're just like adding and deleting files, but if you had a real commit with many different things, yeah, you can now choose to go in there, modify things, and then make your revert commit. Because, you know, the wordings of this commit is not special. This could be anything that you want. But yeah, these are a whole bunch of different options to um, let you delete something from your Git history, depending on what use case that you have. So with that said, let us know in the comments below if you've ever done any of these things in the past. Do you have any like interesting war stories of doing like a, I don't know, some delete, maybe you accidentally did a force push and broke things for many different people. Uh, that would be kind of fun to read because it didn't happen to me. But yeah, with that said, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer all of them. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up. It really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.